All of MTSU is saddened to hear of the death of Dr. Richard Hanna, who was a professor of economics here in the Jennings A. Jones College of Business. Richard was 59 years old and was taken from us much, much too early. For several years, Richard hosted Inside Academia on this MTSU cable station and interviewed countless scholars on every subject imaginable. He was a scholar and thinker there could have been no better program host for Inside Academia. A friend to students and a true scholar and goodwill ambassador for MTSU, Richard traveled to places like China and Bangladesh, working to create more internships for students and establishing partnerships between MTSU and other universities. Richard also worked tirelessly in reaching out to other cultures to help supply people with books and other learning opportunities. Richard came to MTSU in 1992. A faculty member in the University Honors Program, he developed the first Buchanan Fellows Macroeconomics course in the Honors College. He also created the first online graduate level managerial economics course. Just recently, he had traveled to George Mason University where he was looking through the papers of James M. Buchanan, MTSU graduate and 1986 Nobel Laureate in Economics. MTSU President Sidney A. McPhee noted that Richard was a distinguished professor, beloved by his students and colleagues, and greatly valued for his service to our university. His scholarship and leadership helped make MTSU stronger, and we are deeply saddened by his passing. Our deepest sympathies go out to Richard's wife, Emma, and the entire family. MTSU's new Saudi Student Association recently served as host for the inaugural Building Bridges special event held to promote cultural awareness. The event was held to help make students and citizens in the community more aware and educated about Saudi students and their vibrant culture. President Abdullah al Kabraish says that the group wants to help orient the new Saudi students to Middle Tennessee State University as well as serve the Murfreesboro community. The purpose of the club is to promote and support cultural and social exchanges among its members, the campus, and the community. Their hope is that by building bridges and connections on campus and within the surrounding community, there will be solid ground for a more peaceful world. I thought this event was wonderful. Um, it marks the beginning of the uh, Saudi Student Association and we are hoping that we will see more events from them. They were very uh, welcoming. They had multiple events and they had a great food, dance, um, several speakers and several different areas of, uh, that talk about the culture, uh, business, economics. Uh, all kinds of different aspects of the Saudi life. The event included a photography gallery, entertainment and traditional dancing, authentic Saudi cuisine, demonstrations of the art of henna painting, discussions on Saudi women, as well as information about the tourism, economy and foreign investments of Saudi Arabia. Today there is a lot of um, um, focus on uh, social aspects of Saudi Arabia and it really showed us uh, the, the, the similarities rather than the differences between the American culture and the Saudi culture. All students were invited to attend the event to learn and become more educated about Saudi Arabia and the Middle East. Many came away with a new perspective and a fresh outlook on this fascinating and exciting nation. We're just really proud of the Saudi Student Association so Hopefully they'll uh, host this as an annual event and it'll be something we can look forward to coming back to. Scholars Week at MTSU. It sounds so stiff and stodgy. Basic and Applied Sciences. Wow, does that sound boring. Professional Science. <sighs> I don't even know what that means. What is that cow doing at Scholars Week? 
physics and astronomy. Oh man, I barely made it through general science. Are people really reading those posters? Ah, refreshments. Now that part of Scholars Week I can appreciate. Looks like I'm not the only one. Yeah, I wonder if I could take one of those for a spin around the block. And uh, got working on the moon buggy because I have an interest in engineering and machining. The, the buggy actually has to fold up into a four foot cube. We have to have simulated storage space or, or true storage space. Could someone tell me what Scholars Week at MTSU is all about? These are two projects that I did with some students. Uh, these are uh, interactive multimedia presentations. Okay, Scholars Week is a time when students and faculty can talk about the weather. I mean, very serious weather. I compared the coverage of the national newspapers, national television, and local news. Okay, I, I get that. Scholars Week is a time to discover research collaborations across several disciplines. Scholars Week at MTSU is a collage of colors. Noise, music, and lively interaction. It's a culmination of scholarship and partnership. It represents labors of love and windows to the future of promising scholars who aspire to reach beyond their grasp. Whether the discipline is in liberal arts, business, mass communication, education, basic and applied sciences, behavioral and health sciences, graduate studies, or university college. There is no greater thrill, no more fun, no finer sensation than to see students aim high and soar. MTSU, it's different here. All right, welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Tom Tozer, Director of News and Media Relations here at MTSU, and I'm sitting in the seat uh, usually occupied by Dr. Bob Pondillo, who is a guest today. So Bob's <laughs> in the other hot seat uh, across the table from me. Uh, and Bob is, uh, uh, as you know, professor in the Electronic Media Communication Department and uh, award-winning writer, uh, television uh, uh, producer, <laughs> filmmaker. All, should I go on? Please go on. No, Please no, go no, on. That's yes, enough. indeed. Thank you. Uh, yes. Welcome, uh, Bob. And, Good to be and here. Uh, Thanks, uh, with Bob is uh, Dr. Rami Shapiro. And uh, Rami, welcome. And Rami is an adjunct professor of religion here at MTSU, writer, author, lecturer. Um, what else? Anything you want me to add? Well, well, just go longer than you for These That's folks right. are just good guys, <laughs> and I'm happy to be here to talk with them about the Writer's Loft, 
The Writer's Loft is a great program here at MTSU. We're going to talk about that. Uh, Rami Shapiro is uh, director of the uh, program, and, and Bob is one of the faculty members, among mm -hmm. many others. So let's begin, and then maybe we'll have a little time to talk about the, the quality and status of writing in general these days. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, Rami, tell us about the Writer's Loft. What is it? So the Writer's Loft is a unique program in North America. There's only one other program like it. It's a non-degree studio program for people who are looking to improve their writing, but even more actually complete projects and get them out into the marketplace. It's a trimester program, so it's 12 months total. You don't have to take them in a row, but when you complete 12 months of study at the Writer's Loft, MTSU does give you a certificate of, in creative writing. Not a degree won't do you much good if you're trying to get into to, uh, you know, to a teaching faculty position you know, with that. But it does say that you've completed this. But the real work of the Writer's Loft is that you tell us what you're interested in, what you're trying to produce. We'll match you up with a faculty member who has expertise in that. And then that faculty member's job is to help you improve your writing, but produce. And eventually, and we hope within 12 months, that's my personal ideal, that within that year that you're working on this stuff, you actually finish a project that you can then bring to market. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's important too that, you know, oftentimes creative people, the hardest part about creativity is just parking your butt, sitting down and doing it, you know. And I think if you have somebody on your side encouraging you and, and saying, well, let's see what you got. Let's, let's, you know, hit certain goals and hit certain marks along the 12-month along the period and see what we come up with. I think that helps. And, uh, yeah. Do you attract people who are generally writers already, but they need honed and sharpened and they want to get published? Do you attract people who are really kind of like, I'd like to be a writer and be a, a better writer? What, what stages of development are these people? Yeah, I, we, we get both. Uh, we've yeah. had someone who's, who has a, um, who sold a manuscript already. They sold the idea, the publisher's waiting for the manuscript, and like Bob said, they just can't get it done. So we team them up with someone who will, I mean, sitting by their side, no, really sitting on their butt and, and pushing them to get it done. The university yes. has specific deadlines we have to meet, but then the, the mentor faculty member has to, you know, really push us. So we get people who are that far along a process, and then we get people who say, you know, I, the, the whole idea of being a writer is, is just attracts me, and how do you do that, and what's the first thing you do? Uh, you know, for some people, the writer's track means getting drunk mostly. <laughs> and that, that's how they see it, you know. And those people don't usually make the class, or, right? Yeah, no, no, like no, no, no. <laughs> those are people who never anything. actually get to do it. So these are people who have worked through the romance and are really ready to right. sit down and actually produce stuff, yeah. but maybe never have never done it before. Th that's a good point too about this romantic notion of a writer, about how uh, you know it's going to be something amazing, right? And it could, it could very well be, but if you don't sit and do it. Which is really, I mean, it really is difficult to sit down and do it. Look, to look at a, a you know, blank piece of paper or a, a screen with nothing on it and you have to come up with something and make it work. Which you've done occasionally probably, right? Looked well, I'd like to paper. think I have, yeah. Some, yeah. some have said so. Sure. But it's still, you know, I'm, I'm, I never feel like I've uh, completely got it right yet. But uh, yeah. I'd like and to help out. When you out. look at that blank screen, I, mean, I work on computer primarily. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've published 24 books. So I've looked at lots of blank screens, <laughs> but the next one is always just as blank as the first one. It's, right. I, I trust the process more, but it doesn't make it any easier. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I think if we, if we get the student to do one thing is to trust the process and just mm -hmm. you know, write garbage if that's what it is. Rewriting is where you make it better. So just come, get over the fact that you're not Hemingway mm -hmm. you know, and just start <laughs> typing and then we'll make you into uh, Oh, what, the faux Hemingway or who, who, Whoever well, you are. We'll just give you a lot of cats, if not. <laughs> sure, there you go. So but that's like, true. Yeah. You, do, you do have to sit and, and start writing. And that means maybe three or four pages are going to be pretty garbagey. But the fourth page will be, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. There's where we start. Mm -hmm. But you've got to get going. It's taking and a so. block of stone and sculpting away the stuff that doesn't belong yeah, right. so you finally have yeah, what, exactly. you, what you want. And what you, how does a person get involved in the writer's law? Well, they go on the w website. You can go through MTSU and then slash the loft. Um, you know, go to the formal MTSU website. We've also made it even easier. Just go to thewritersloft at mtsu.com. <laughs> That's good. Spell the whole thing That's out. Right. Thewritersloft at mtsu.com. Simplicity. And yeah. that will take you through the uh, EDU, you know, of the university itself. And then you can, you can look over the website, see how it functions. You register. 
you send us some sample writing so and it comes to me so that I can get a sense of what you want to do. Then we talk on the phone. I mean, that's the key, is I have to get a sense that you're serious and a sense of what you want to do, and then see if we have faculty to do it. Now, we have, we're part of the English department, so we have the entire English faculty to work with here, as well as the rest of the faculty at the university. So we brought you know, Bob in from outside the English department for those who are working on screenplays. Uh, so we have a tremendous faculty to choose from. It's just finding that right person that you can you feel okay. comfortable with. Good. Well, I'm getting the wind it up signal from, from uh, <laughs> over there. So yeah. we got to do that. Thank you very much, Ron Shapiro, Thank Bob Pondiddle. Thanks Thank very you, much. Tom. Good luck with that program. And uh, folks, uh, go to the website and get involved. We'll be right back with more Out of the Blue. We started in 1911 with a clear mission to train Tennessee's best teachers. For the last 100 years, Middle Tennessee State University has carried out that mission and so much more. Nationally recognized as an affordable quality university, the number one choice of undergraduates in Tennessee. As we celebrate our centennial, we look with pride at the past. We look forward to the future. Check out why we're Tennessee's best. This is not just a recording studio. This is not just a flight school. This is not just a university. This is MTSU, home of Tennessee's best. There is a truism about successful entrepreneurs. Those who do well, share well. They start out with a lot of passion and little money. They beg, borrow, and barely scrape by to make those early Friday payrolls. And because they struggle so ferociously and nobly to achieve their dream, they feel obliged to give back in a very big and generous way. When you visit Pam Wright, MTSU alumna, at her Wright Travel Headquarters in Nashville. It is readily apparent that this psychology major turned businesswoman has done very well on all accounts. I was in my 20s when I identified the opportunity and um, had loved to travel for a long time. I find the travel industry very exciting. And um, I think as most entrepreneurs do, I identified a business opportunity and the opportunity was that there was um, what I felt was a deficiency of um, kind of top level travel companies to manage corporate travel. So as a result of that, I developed the concept of opening with uh, really phenomenal type service, selling the high customer service level at the lowest cost possible, and as a result, um, developed quite a lot of business opportunities with bringing in corporate accounts and some government accounts as a result of that. 
and our main is Pam launched her travel agency in 1981. So, she says so Tennessee was and is fertile ground for planting the seeds of a new enterprise. Good, good choice. But those early beginnings well, were not so without hurdles. I think Tennessee, um, when I opened, Tennessee was uh, very business friendly in terms of the processes and starting businesses, and I still think that's the case. Tennessee is much more business friendly in the process, so it's not extremely difficult to register new businesses and so forth. So, um, so that was not as much of a difficulty as I feel like it can be in other areas. Wright Travel has 47 employees and has expanded into eight states from Baltimore to Denver and is considered a national company. I think um, quality service in a service industry is just clearly key and uh, it's been important as we grew through um, and we're considered a national agency now and it's been very very important to keep that level of service so it's one of the ways we attract new business and we continue to sell it's that we have the capability of large national agencies I won't name some of my large national competitors but um, that we have that capability but we still have the kind of mom-and-pop customer centric type approach to the service level that our agents extend to customers. Melissa Edwards is another MTSU alumna who graduated in 1985 with a degree in business administration. Edwards traveled several career paths and spent 13 years in the travel business before coming to Wright Travel. Working for Pam Wright is very awesome. I learn a lot. It's a challenge every day. I learn something new every day and it's a very much a growth experience. Kristen Henke, Sales and Marketing Director for Wright Travel, has been with the company for two years and came there immediately out of college. What is absolutely wonderful, especially being you know, a college graduate, you know, again I graduated in December of 2008, being able to work for Pam Wright, I mean, she, you know, she's the president and CEO of this company, and to be able to work so closely with her has been just a phenomenal opportunity because of the fact that I'm able to learn from someone who built a business from, you know, the bottom up. Uh, so it's been just a phenomenal, again, opportunity to be able to work so closely with her and to be able to learn and enhance my skills as well. People that have so we know that Pam Wright has done well. If they're travel agents, she has also shared well. In 2007, now, the Pam committed $1.25 million dollars right to establish the endowed Wright Travel Chair, chair in Entrepreneurship in the Jennings A. Jones College of Business um, at MTSU. This allowed the university to so, attract um, Dr. Doug really Tatum, a recognized expert on capital markets and entrepreneurial growth businesses, who was CEO of his own consulting firm for 17 years, growing it into the largest consulting firm in the United States. Well, I, you know, I think in, in substance what we're doing is we're teaching these students the, the concepts of how to start a business and how to grow a business, business formation and growth. So much of business education in the United States is built around Fortune 1000s. And the reality of the matter is most of these students are going to find themselves either working for an entrepreneur or perhaps trying in an entrepreneurial way to start a business. And they have no uh, focused study in that area. So the, the chair allows a university to have somebody come in who has a specialized knowledge in that area and, and, and teach these kids about really what they might face going forward as they graduate. Well, I wouldn't be here without Pam, and I wouldn't be here without her support. And she is has built a a uh, wonderful, successful company. Uh, the reputation is outstanding. One of the things I came out of the corporate world, and uh, when a minute I moved to Nashville, I started using her firm, and and I told her I wish I'd known about her firm back when I was uh, when I had fourteen hundred employees. We would have been a big customer, but she's a wonderful contributor to the university and a wonderful example, more importantly, of someone who's taken an idea in a non-high-tech industry, if you will, uh, and built an unusual value proposition around service in a very difficult environment to do that. Pam has been a, a great uh, corporate person, if you will, in Nashville, and, and she has been marvelous uh, here on the campus, not only 
to the College of Business, but in other places as well. And, and uh, yes, the gift that she made, uh, not only was it an extraordinary gift and the first of its kind for the college and the first of its kind for the campus, uh, but in addition to that, it was a, it was a marker. Uh, it helped us to see what's possible, and I think it's really uh, established a, a sort of leadership mark for others uh, in the community and other graduates to see, you know, this is, a, this is what you can do if you really have a passion for the, for, the, uh, for the College of Business or for any college on the campus. Pam had passion. Uh, she knew what she really enjoyed. She enjoyed travel. She enjoyed being a part of that. And, and I think what really happened was she said, how do I find a way to make a living doing something I'm really passionate about? And, and I think that's a, that's a huge difference. Uh, people who, who start businesses primarily for the purpose of making money uh, are, are usually not successful. People who start businesses for the purposes of the passion that they have, for satisfying a need, the money comes as a result of really loving what you do and doing it well. The best teacher is someone who's been in the trenches of the real world workplace. I still love what I'm doing and I do get asked all the time, you know, why don't you just sell your company and relax and travel and have fun, but I'm having fun. So, no, I've never wanted to um, reverse that or change that decision. Throughout the year, the MTSU community is privileged to have distinguished guests come to campus to speak to students and faculty. During April, the campus and community were invited to an evening with Megan McCain, daughter of Senator John McCain, and distinguished thinker and speaker in her own right. It's been so fun being on my college speaking tour, and to end it here with all of you is just really sweet. I'm actually staying here an extra day just because I love the city so much, so I get a little extra added day on. Um, I understand I'm here for LGBT week. And Dr. Leslie Gay, Jr., Associate Professor of Ethnomusicology at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, addressed the topic of globalization of music and in particular the influence to English language rock on Danish popular music. You know, Danes have sort of taken on American and other popular musics and used that music to help reshape or think about their own position in the world and their own identity. Forensic pathologist Dr. Jan Garavaglia, or Dr. G as she is known on the Discovery Health Channel, spoke to a crowd in Murphy Center about forensic pathology, fact and fiction. Dr. Jay LaBeouf, Senior Advisor for Education and Communications at the National Academy of Science, explored the subject of teaching controversial topics in the field of science. The purpose of what we do is both to advance science and technology in the United States, to make sure that, that it's robust, that it's well supported, that we have, the government has the information that it needs to be able to make critical decisions. Should they go back to the Hubble Space Telescope to repair it, or should they do something else? Join us in celebrating 100 years of MTSU history. Check out the Centennial Timeline at mtsu.edu slash centennial.